what are we talking about today? Uh, private content routing. So there's a couple things. We can start with content routing and the specific subset of this overall distributed network thing that we are, are dealing with. Um, right now, the, the main structure that we're seeing in data transfer in something like IPFS is you've got a client, you've already got some connected peers, and in the current world, what routing and looks like when you're trying to look up a SID is you first talk to your connected peers, you see if any of them have it. If you don't have it from there, you fall back to a DHT lookup, which gives you more connected peers, right? So, so the, the initial lookup is through is over bit swap on your, on your current connected peers. When, when your current sort of set of connections doesn't work, you fall back to a DHT because it's you know, more expensive, right? It, it takes longer than those immediate single hop to, to your current swarm. Um, over time, as we make content routing a fast thing, the hope is that that is, is no longer, right, like this, this, I start by talking to my current peers and then I fall back to a content routing subsystem. The reason that it's like that is an artifact of the bit swap thing being seen as really, or sorry, as of the DHT being really expensive, right? Like if that's going to take me seconds, which is what it took when we were, when it became a fallback, that's not something that you want to do every SID. That's just like not gonna cut it. But if, if this was fast, if this meets the stuff we were talking about yesterday where it's 10 milliseconds, that stops being nearly as scary. And in fact, it might be faster to first go to content routing and say, who's near me, who should I be talking to? If that's only 10 milliseconds, then knowing that I go to the right peer can save me a lot of bandwidth and time versus trying all of my connected peers before I make that 10 millisecond call. So at least you would want to do them in parallel, and maybe you even just start with your content routing lookup on a SID. Um, that said, if it's like a graph and you're pretty sure that the person who gave you the block before also has the blocks under it, maybe you can continue still directly doing it. So there, but there's some interplay that's going to keep changing between the, the data transfer and content routing. Um, and, and so then what is this interface that we're building around content routing? You're asking for a SID and then you're getting back, and this, and this is the part that isn't in the interface, right? Do you get back all peers that have that SID, all potential nodes in the interplanetary? Do you get the ones that are closest to the client? Um, we have not really set up semantics yet on the, the client specificity of that answer. In the DHT today, it's a global client agnostic response, uh, but, but in order to get our performance targets, there's a lot of expectation that that response actually cares somewhat about the client, like who's asking. If, if I ask who has this SID in North America, I probably expect a different answer than if I ask it in Asia Pacific. Um, because giving the full list of everyone who has that SID for a popular SID is really big, enough that you <coughs> probably are gonna need to truncate it, and then the truncation where you're prioritizing is a different priority uh, in different places. Uh, and so that's gonna, I think, be one of the conflict interplays that, that becomes important as we get into privacy. Um, Okay, so, so that was like the content routing, but then what's the privacy part? Well, there's, there's a few different uh, definitions of privacy, and we'll see those as we get into different mechanisms today. Um, one of the ways that we say what is privacy is a, a concept of linkability. So linkability is can I make a link? Can I, do I have some knowledge between the, the client and then what they asked for, right? So who asked for what? Or like the, did this client and the server talk? Like if I can take, create links between two things, either either the the content layer and the people that are asking for it, I, that's a you can talk about linkability there, or the two sides of a connection. If you can link them together, so the communications coming from a client and the communications on a client you, or a server, you can also talk about that as a linkability problem. Um, and so that's that's sort of like a one to zero, like like it's a boolean of like, do we. In, in what conditions do we have linkability or not? Who can make that link? Um, there's more gradiated forms of privacy that we can take as well though. So there, there's a concept of k-anonymity, which is how many other people can I confuse this with? So great, like there's a pool, but if that pool is only two users, that's not nearly as strong as if that pool's 5,000 users or, right? So like we have some total number of IPFS users. That's probably the biggest number of confusion that you can get. And so you can think about this in terms of that K. 
differential privacy is another sort of structuring of this privacy problem. And that's looking at the distribution of a set of logs and talking about how do you inject noise or think about the, the perturbation such that if an entry is removed, or added, like any individual entry doesn't change this distribution. So, so what do we need to perturb and how much distinguishability or how much differential change is, are you going to get from any individual entry? And can you either inject noise or make yours look different such that you maintain distributions or make it hard to, uh, I don't know, see the difference from this entry? Um, that's probably a bad definition of this, but, but it, it gives you a sense that this is a different uh, structuring from these other two. The other thing that privacy is really framed by is your threat model. And so we'll probably hear this either implicitly or sometimes called out explicitly, which is what is it that we're actually um, protecting about? And so you have to have some adversary that you are saying, you know, this system is designed to have this property such that an adversary with some capabilities can't do something. Um, and so that's really, you know, what, what, what do we let the adversary do and what, what is that threat? So is it an ISP who can monitor traffic going over wires versus can they actually compromise some number of nodes in the network? Um, are they a node in the network? So is it, is it someone who's running an IPFS entity or a, you know, some node that, that's participating in the system actively? Um, or, or, you know, do they get a global passive adversary? They can see actually all of the network traffic. Um, so so this, is, this is, I think, really, yeah, so th these are sort of the two things to have in mind when we talk about any of these privacy models is what threat model is this protecting against? Is that a realistic or sufficient threat model? Uh, and then what sort of property around the privacy is it trying to define? Okay, why do we care? Um, and I think we'll, we'll get more of this. So, so there, there's one thing which is, okay, can we just encrypt the content and call that good? Uh, and there's a couple comment like memes that, that we go on for why we say encryption is not enough. One is, right, metadata has become a big uh, meme. Um, this, is, this is the place where it's like, OK, like, so signal is end-to-end -end encrypted. Is that good enough? What else do we need to do? Um, I, think, I think Juan has a good, I don't know, comment on this that I've heard, right, which is we're in this interesting time where we've got a huge amount of data, right? Data, data goes up um, and has gone up where we don't yet have the automated data analytics that have pushed us into a surveillance state to the level that we can't get out yet. But that's happening, right? Like as AI is moving faster, the, the amount, the ability to just like capture all of this data that's out there is going to also go exponentially while the data might not. And so if we don't get privacy soon, we're going to have a lot of trouble getting privacy. Like that, this is not going to get easier from that perspective. We're going to get locked into a set of norms around just everything being seen unless, unless the systems where that norm becomes privacy and you stop being able to analyze the data happens pretty soon. Um, it's also true that there's just a lot of applications when we think about interactive or, or types of data that are going on networks that, that have privacy implications and privacy concerns. And so we should be aware about like if, if we want these to be applicable to the interplanetary stack, we need to think about what the privacy story is, right? So if you're doing e-commerce or things with payments, people don't want their credit card just on an IPFS network where every participant can see it, right? And so, great, okay, we can like encrypt the block so that you can't just like see my credit card. That's a good start. But, but the, there, there's a whole bunch of other things around transaction volume, like can I see my competitors, like how many transactions they're making pr over time, where you start caring about metadata in a lot of these cases as the merchant. Um, anything that's got chat or messaging where it's people talking, they care about their privacy. They, they probably don't want those, you know, unencrypted, but they also start to care about the social network mining and, right, like people didn't like Cambridge Analytica that could mine people's social graphs on Web 2. They're not going to like that that's possible in a Web 3 because you can see the interactions of who's requesting what SIDS over, over an interplanetary stack. And so we start to have to care about how do we delink stuff. Um, and then if you've got file storage or collaboration, either in an office environment or like if I'm putting my backups, like I probably want some protection there. Now, what is that protection? Is that protection just that I've encrypted it or is there also access pattern stuff or, or more 
uh, informed. That's that's a, a a deeper question that's going to be nuanced. I think a lot of users aren't going to be able to like express their threat model and what expectations around K anonymity they have there. Like that that's not like the way that people talk about. But they want privacy in some level, and so we need to think about what is enough that we feel comfortable saying, "Great, you've got a secure and private uh, connection." Um, okay, so what what are we talking about today? Um, We've got, we've got a bunch of different uh, talks around different parts of this privacy as it relates to content routing and, and getting into data transfer. Um, so we'll get some on BitSwap and the, at the actual data transfer level. Um, and then we'll get a bunch around content routing things. So thinking about mixed nets, thinking about how do we do content routing where the content is not leaked to the network, which is double hashing gets into, um, and then uh, some of the other uh, exciting with what the, 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 few, the, the more researchy uh, forms that, that, we could, that this could take. There's a bunch of, of other mechanisms that we're not going to talk about as well. So, so this is not an exhaustive list, uh, either of what mechanisms to be thinking about or that we're even actively considering. So, so I want to like throw up a few, but there's, there's actually a lot more as well. Um, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to Hong on time. So there we go. <laughs>